Welcome to the Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh's exhibition Moonstruck, 500 Years of Mental Health, where we look at patients and practitioners, their experiences of mental health, and how treatments have changed over the last 500 years. So we start with the very earliest material that we have, which is from the 1500s. And this book is by Johann Weyer, and he's discussing the idea of mental health being synonymous with witches, with demons, and with supernatural beliefs. So moving on slightly to the 1600s, this is one of my favorite books. This is called The Anatomy of Melancholy, and it's by a gentleman called Robert Burton. And rather than being a, a medical person, he's a reverend, and he talks about his own experiences with melancholy. And he says, it is the best thing in the world to get a trusted friend to whom we may freely and sincerely pour out our secrets. And then we move on slightly and we look at uh, the physician's treatments for mental health um, in this period. Into the 1700s, the difference between how you'd be treated with mental health problems if you were rich and if you were poor. So we have here a copy of a letter written by William Cullen, who was president of this college. Um, and he's treating a woman, Mistress Downman, um, and he recommends trips to Europe, uh, visiting her friends in London, horse riding and going to parties. Slightly different from the same time is this book, which is called The Poor Man's Physician. So this is a description essentially of how you would self-treat. So for madness, uh, you take honey, you wear an amulet and you dance. So we're moving into the 1800s, and this is really the rise of asylums. The earliest asylums, such as Bedlam in London, were known for their particularly poor conditions. But from the 1800s onwards, you start a growth of asylums which are much more about sort of treating patients as well as confining them. So this is one, this is the illustration of a machine for giving the douche. Um, and what this did was essentially a patient had to be tied down in a bath and then buckets of water were poured over them. And there was this idea that the shock of the cold water would somehow cure them. Just to explain these pictures up here, these are probably, for me personally, the highlight of the exhibition. These are illustrations from the collection of Alexander Morrison, who was a physician at Bedlam Asylum in London. Earlier illustrations of patients tended to be very much stereotypes, whereas these illustrations are named individuals. We know their lives because Morrison felt it was important to collect all this information and that that would make him better equipped to treat these individuals. Just to emphasize that, that not everyone was as progressive as Morrison was with this. Patients of Charcot in Paris, he got his patients to act out their illness in front of a paying audience which included individuals like Sigmund Freud, although there's an argument that they were essentially acting rather than actually showing real symptoms. What we really try to do with this exhibition is uncover the voice of the patient, which isn't always easy to do. Um, the experiences of physicians and psychiatrists were much more often recorded. These illustrations here are by William Blacklock. He had been an artist for many years before being in institutionalized. Some of his works are at various institutions such as the Victoria and Albert Museum down in London. And if you look closely at these illustrations, you can see the differences between this and sort of more conventional portraiture. He was very keen on drawing little devils on everything. This is a personal favorite of mine, Thomas Schuster, who is suffering from shock through disappointment in love. Um, has a far away look, will do anything he's asked for a cup of tea. This is a book by Henry Newcomb uh, in the 1800s. It's autobiographical. He came over some sort of condition. His wife calls a doctor and he is very quickly institutionalized. It was not uncommon for people to be institutionalized against their will. If you wanted to get rid of your wife, you might have her institutionalized. If you wanted to inherit your father's title, you might have him put away. Finally, we have two items which are borrowed from the Lothian Health Services archive. We have uh, an ECT machine from the 1980s and a straitjacket. Just to end up, we have a summary of changes that have taken place in 20th century psychiatry. And we also have information about uh, what people hope to see from the future of psychiatry and their own personal experiences. The Royal College of Physicians of Edinburgh has two temporary exhibitions per year. They are free, they're open to the public. You're welcome to come and visit and you can find out more on our website at rcpe.ac.uk.